Video number three, and you're still there, that's very good. Let's do something different now. We're going to use several play commands. We'll use the beautiful Kalimba synth for that. Kalimba, you see the auto completion. I'm not typing that fast, but in many occasions Sonic Pi has an auto completion that helps you type ahead and type faster. That's quite interesting when we get to live coding later on. And uh, if the question is, how can I tell which, which th synths there are actually available in Sonic Pi, you can go here to the help system hit help and down below you get the tutorial example and synths and I already highlighted kalimba which is one of the synths that you can see for the time being that would be the list of synthesizers available in Sonic Pi and uh, later on we will go into the details here on the right side with the options now back to where we were Let's try to run our little two-liner program with this content. And you see it's very low. And uh, the kalimba needs a little bit of help. So we'll go and pump up the volume a little bit. Let's use synth defaults and say amp. That's the amplification, the volume to a level of 4, from a level of 1, so 4 times as loud. Uh, there's a logarith logarithmic thing about it. It's not 4 times as loud perceived by us, uh, but the signal is 4 times as high. So we get it a little bit louder. And probably you can hear it. Okay, so that would be that. So we add two more notes now, like a, for example, play 64. Uh, for those of you who do know musical notes, that one here is a C4 and that one here is an E4. And we add another one, which would be the play 67, or the note 67, MIDI note 67, which is a G, G4. Sorry, not a G, a G. Okay, so if we now hit run. Well, that sounds beautiful, actually. But, uh, well, haven't we just said that these four commands are supposed to run one after the other? But this sounds like a chord, right? Like three nodes playing at the same time and ending at the same time as well. So you might have expected what is called an arpeggio, which would be a chord distributed over time, like bing, bing, bing. But this is not the case. In fact, in spite of the sounds sounding at the same time, the commands are actually executed one after the other. So first line one, two, line two is empty, then line three sets the uh, volume, line 4 is empty, and then one after the other, lines 5, 6, and 7, 3 play commands. But we need to look a little bit more into detail what the play command actually does. It spawns the sound generation into a thread in the background, so we use a kind of subsystem which is built into Sonic Pi, which plays the sound until it's done and immediately proceeds to the next line, line 6, playing the next sound. So, in line 6, when we start the execution of line 6, the sound in line started in line 5 is still playing. The line is uh, has been executed, but the sound is still playing by some background device or so-called thread. So, welcome to the world of threaded or parallel computing. We're not doing it this quite ourselves. It's a subsystem that's actually doing it, but we have all the after effects, right? So we have to deal with things executing at the same time. So, in a normal programming course, you 
probably wouldn't reach this topic in the first term, in the first university term, maybe not even in the second, because uh, this is uh, not a very uh, trivial thing, actually. But on the other side, uh, we need it in music, so only one sound at the time that would be a very dull kind of music. So, the three lines, five, six, seven, like the others, are executed one after the others, uh, one after the other, and since computers are really, really fast, we perceive the sounds as starting at the same time, while actually there may be some nanoseconds between the starts. Okay, but this enabled us to have chords, for example. 